Hey everyone, welcome back to L'Amoria La Musique and welcome to my review of the July Beauty Heroes box featuring the Polish brand Oyo Labs. It's been a minute since I've done a Beauty Heroes review here on YouTube. I have been doing them on IG Live, Instagram Live. I talked about last month's box, the Lil Fox box, and then I had done a combined quick review of the Nature of Things box and the Activist Manuka box. So if you're on Instagram, I have been doing more live content over there just so things don't get held up in editing. But today we're talking about it here on YouTube. There was a period of time when I was would never miss a Beauty Heroes box review on YouTube and I'm hoping to get back to that. Great month to return to doing it on YouTube as well because I was really excited about seeing this brand and getting to try it. They've been on my wish list, on my radar for a couple of years now, and I always love when there's a new to me brand discovery. So I had never tried anything. I had heard of the brand from years ago. Someone through Patreon had mentioned what, the Algae Mania facial oil to me, which is still kind of on my wish list to try. But the two products in this month's box are the Calming Adaptogenic Facial Emulsion and the Multidimensional Hydrating Facial Serum. If you're new to Beauty Heroes, it's a monthly subscription box. You can go month to month, or you can do, I think, three, six, or 12 month subscriptions with the cost of the box going down the longer you subscribe for. For anybody that's a new Beauty Heroes subscriber, as in new email with a Beauty Heroes subscription, that's always like my little workaround. You can get 15% off any term subscription using the code LAMORE15. And now let's just get on to talking about this month's discovery. So I knew a little bit kind of superficially about Oyo Lab. I know that they, I think I'm saying Oyo Labs, it's Oyo Lab, based in Poland. And I believe the brand started in 2018 by a woman named Joanna. They began with ethically sourced botanicals. Uh, every formula optimized with clean bioactives made through proprietary methods directly in their Polish in-house lab. So that is something that sets Oyo Lab apart is that they control everything from the ingredient sourcing to the production and manufacturing, which is somewhat rare in, in the beauty space. So a lot of brands are not like they're not started by a formulator they're started by someone that wants to start a brand and then they contract with a lab to essentially do private label brands so that's why when uh, someone is really controlling the production either through hand making things in an artisanal way like earthwise or in light or something like that um there's also this category of brands that essentially build and, and create their own labs. So One Love Organics is such a brand, and I think Pi is also runs their own facility. Every ingredient in Oyo Lab products follows their foundational formulation philosophy to minimize the number of natural resources used by maximizing their potency. So I feel that this brand tries to situate itself in green, clean beauty, being relying on natural ingredients, but then also harnessing the power of technology, which is something that I could dissect and talk about at another point in time. Because there's already gonna be enough critique in this video when we get to the hyaluronic acid portion. So let's start off by talking about the Calming Adaptogenic Facial Emulsion, the Forest Retreat. This, this and the Algae Mania face oil were the two products in the brand that I kind of felt the most aligned with. And so I was really excited to see this in here to try. It incorporates 14 natural extracts, combining adaptogenic plants, extracted mushrooms, sustainably sourced moss tissue culture extract, and Vosgian fur seed oil. Um, it's essentially meant to reduce redness in the skin. It's an emulsion which I think people are pretty familiar with this style of product. I like products like this because they're quite flexible. They don't just have one way that you can use them. You can use them alone, which I feel that this provides enough moisture to be used alone. It can be used AM or PM. It leaves just a slight tackiness to the skin. 
Um, but actually like if you really rub it in, it becomes quite smooth and just very barely tacky. It can sit, in my opinion, can sit nicely under makeup. You could put a little bit of face oil over top. So if I'm using this during the day, I'll do two to three pumps, kind of let that sink in. And then I will usually do two, maybe three drops of a face oil. And I find that I get the best makeup application that way. If I'm using it at night, I just use it alone with an eye product. And I find that it provides plenty of moisture. And after even just one, two uses, kind of every time I use it, I do notice a decrease in, in redness in my skin. I do tend to get a little bit red kind of right through my cheeks. And I do feel that this kind of does what, what it says it's going to do. Designed for all skin types, especially irritated and exposed to stress. Formulated without synthetic preservatives and fragrance. The only thing I would say about this, I was chatting about this with my friend Marie and the color green who is much more well versed in ingredients than I am, but she said that this has pentylene glycol in it, which it does, it's pretty low in the ingredient list. And I need to talk to her a little bit more about this, but she basically said that it, I think it's a skin softening agent of, of some sort. And that it's there's a whole host of ingredients in green beauty that it depends on what your definition of green slash healthy for the skin is. I have a lot to say about that with respect to hyaluronic acid. I guess pentylene glycol is just something to maybe dig into a little bit. I'm not super concerned about it in this because it's low on the ingredient list. Maybe it is always low in an ingredient list, but this has no hyaluronic acid in it, uh, which is rare. Um, hyaluronic acid is in ev everything. Uh, which is part of the problem in my opinion um, but this was definitely the standout uh, of the box for me for sure they list a batch number and a best used before date so mine is listed as may of 2024 so they do have quite a nice long shelf life and i i mean it's got this sort of light um oh kind of a light citrusy scent but it's very, very pleasant. It's not strong. I like the texture. I like emulsions. I think that they're fun to use. And given my aversion to hyaluronic acid, they are a type of serum product that I will use. And um, the flexibility and the effect, I think it's, it's a really great product. So if you're looking for something fun to play with in a skincare routine, you maybe have some bouts of redness and whatnot in your skin. I do think that this is a really, a really nice one to try. So this retails 30 mils for $80. Some of the other ingredients in it, ashwagandha, astragalus, flaxseed oil, reishi, maitake, and shiitake mushroom extract, moss extract, and wild indigo. Astragalus is something I'm really interested in in skincare. It's uh, the predominant ingredient in um, a Chinese medicine skincare brand called Bio Herbology that I discovered through my acupuncturist, uh, my Chicago acupuncturist. All right, now we move on to the multidimensional hydrating serum named Aquasphere. So this is a 30 ml bottle again for 85. So it retails for $5 more than the forest retreat. Multi-level hydrating serum supercharged with five forms of hyaluronic acid two hyaluronic acid and elastin precursors and active plant substances, mm, feather light gel serum, clinically tested to help increase skin hydration level up to 49.5% after just seven days of use. I think we're all pretty familiar with what hyaluronic acid serums promise. I'm gonna try and be brief because this could be a whole video unto itself. So I haven't actually used this on my skin and I won't be using it on my skin. Uh, my perspective on hyaluronic acid is really born out of firsthand experience and noticing what serums like this do to my skin over time, then buttressed by research that I have seen other skincare formulators talking about online. So this is certainly not meant as an attack on oil lab at all. Hyaluronic acid is just so pervasive in the beauty industry. I'm not really sure why it got taken up as like this superstar ingredient 
five years ago, it wasn't really that way from what I remember. So my first introduction to hyaluronic acid was through the Provise Nutrify 1-6 to six Tonic. This is actually a very old Beauty Heroes Hero product that I fell in love with. I had never used a hyaluronic acid serum before. I had very dry skin at the time and I really loved that product. I thought it was fun to use. I felt like it did plump up my skin. I felt like I was getting good results. Um, that did eventually kind of wane, but my initial, however, you know, four, five, six months of using it, I thought I really liked it. They went on to discontinue that product and reformulated it, and it was kind of never really the same. And then all brands started creating hyaluronic acid serums, and it just became a thing that you put in everything. You put it in makeup, you put it in face masks, you put it in every single serum. Um, it's just in, in lip products. It's so, so, so common. And you would think hearing about it that it's innocuous, that it's just meant to plump and increase hydration in the skin. And what I was eventually finding not even necessarily, I guess, just with hyaluronic acid, but with just a lot of skincare in general, is that I had really diminishing returns on my skin personally. I just felt like after years of experimenting with different serums, lots of hyaluronic acid products, lots of peptides and all this kind of stuff, I just felt like I wanted to throw them all away, which I did last year, I think, when I was pregnant. Uh, with my second baby and after cutting out everything except for an oil cleanser a very simple toner and an oil or a balm my skin got better it was able to balance itself more it was not kind of in this dependency cycle with products where serums were maybe taking it out of balance and then you have to exfoliate and then you have to do all this stuff you know i think we're all very well aware of it the beauty industry likes to create problems that it can then solve with more products. <laughs> so I just found through my firsthand experience that I wasn't liking the results that I was getting. I didn't feel like hyaluronic acid or like a hyaluronic acid serum was really hydrating my skin. I just didn't. Now you do have to use them. Usually they advise you to use them when it's there's already a lot of moisture in the air or use them with a, a toner because essentially what hyaluronic acid does is it pulls water from your skin. Now it's marketed to actually keep water in the skin, but it is going to pull water from like the surrounding cells and, and tissue. And I think depending on the moisture levels in your skin already and your skin's ability to self-moisturize and self-balance, which all of our skin should be able to do that, but we have been using products for so many years, there's a ton of environmental stressors and pollution and all of that. So I do think skincare is necessary to some extent. I think that hyaluronic acid in the long term is counterproductive to healthy skin. And I know that that's kind of a bold statement. I wanted to reference a couple of <clears throat> resources online for anybody that would like to go read or dig into this a little more to see if it makes sense to you. The first article to direct your attention to comes from Wendy Oriel's Omer blog. Many of you might already know her. She's been calling out a lot of common practices in the beauty industry and the clean green beauty industry for years. She was one of the first people that I found openly writing about the negative effects of retinol on the skin, which has just been <laughs> embraced by green beauty, which I think is so weird. But her article from February of 2019 is titled Cosmetic Hyaluronic Acid Causes Skin Dryness, So We Took It Out of Our Formulas. So she's a skincare biologist. She's done a lot of research on the extracellular matrix of the skin. And as she said, has tried to formulate with hyaluronic acid and has some observations about what it looks like in the formulation process and kind of the conclusions that she was drawing about the effect that it can have on the skin. She says extracellular matrix proteins include collagen and elastin. Collagen provides skin with plump, uh, with that plump youthful look. Elastin provides the elastic quality. Another extracellular matrix molecule is hyaluronic acid. So our body makes all these things internally and as we age, the capacity to generate those things declines as most things decline with age. So 
You know, God bless the skincare industry. I say that extremely tongue in cheek because the same just goes for our entire approach to life really, which is let's then try and impose this back onto you or into you as you stop making it, as opposed to how can we um, support the body to age in a resilient way so that we can prolong your body's ability to make these things at the level de your body is designed to make them. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying that it's wholesale bad to do, I'm just saying that it's a little bit of a compartmentalized flawed logic in my opinion to just say, okay, your body's not making this, let's just put it in there. It's not a, it's like the opposite of a holistic approach, I guess, in, in, in my opinion. And I realize I may be on a bit of a soapbox with this. I just think her article is really interesting. Um, and she talks about how hyaluronic acid holds onto water <clears throat> and that naturally cosmetic companies took to putting hyaluronic acid in their formulas to plump, plump the skin and act as a moisturizing agent. It forms a gel because it pulls water from the environment. So when it's put on the skin topically, it's going to pull water from the environment. And in that case, the environment is your skin. Um, when hyaluronic acid is in its natural environment, the extracellular matrix, it's not going to pull any additional water. It is already saturated or can only take a minimal amount of extra water from its environment and does so in a controlled and tightly regulated manner because it's your body. However, when you add more hyaluronic acid to your skin in unbound forms, such as in skincare, then the hyaluronic acid is going to do exactly what I saw in my beaker, pull water, and the end result is dryness. So if you've ever experienced this, being so confused why all your moisturizing serums are not actually hydrating or moisturizing your skin, not moisturizing, hydrating your skin, um, this is why. <laughs> so I'll link you to this article. The other reference I have is a little bit more bombastic. So please just take it with um, a grain of salt. I'm not into fear mongering. I think that there are far bigger fish to fry than stressing about topical skincare, to be honest with you. Um, I do think it matters, but I think that there's so many other important environmental issues to address, to be honest. So the website is Reverse Skin Aging. Again, it's a skincare biology site, and this is a site that's really focused on copper peptides, um, which is copper as um, supplementing copper, topical copper. This is something I've been really interested in for months now, and I am interested to try a copper peptide serum at some point, but someone sent me this article from reverseskinaging.com. Let me just pull it up. If you go to reverseskinaging.com and you put in hyaluronic acid, a piece will come up that says hyaluronic acid increases cancer by Dr. Lauren Pickert. He lists his credentials. And he says, if you put hyaluronic acid cancer in PubMed, over 4,015 articles or referenced, the heavily advertised beauty industry has been and still is filled with skin damaging treatments that are repeated about every four months for revenue enhancement. He goes on to talk about silicone injections, bovine collagen used as a filler. Um, yeah, basically the beauty industry is pretty unregulated as we know. He says hyaluronic acid is produced by various strains of pathogenic bacteria. Its promotion for skin products is extensive and has been termed blah, 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 hype train. It has been said to be super safe and not even enter your skin. However, actual science paints a very different picture of hyaluronic acid and your skin. So um, he, he says a British study found that the average woman using cosmetics retains 2.2 kilograms of cosmetic ingredients in her body each year. So using a cancer accelerator for years is dangerous. Now, uh, I, this doesn't necessarily freak me out to be perfectly honest with you. I think we have to take these things in context, however, I want to share this information because it was sent to me and I think it's important to at least put it out there so that people can go and read for themselves and then decide what products they're going to use. I realize that this is not a very popular opinion, especially in a review of this box, but I just have to be completely honest that I would never, I would just never use something like this on my skin. Um, I do make slight exceptions with hyaluronic acid because it is so pervasive, it's really, really difficult to completely avoid. And I will use it in masks, like if I'm gonna do a mask, 
you know, a couple times a month. Like it's in that new Naturalogic mask that Boxwalla featured, which is a lovely mask. I see absolutely no reason why it has to have hyaluronic acid in it. It adds nothing to the formula in my opinion. However, it's not my formula and I'm not a formulator. Um, it's in makeup, you know, like I'm trying the Kerawais Skin Tint. This has hyaluronic acid in it. The Kerawais Liquid Foundation has hyaluronic acid in it. Um, so this is just something I, to keep in mind. I'm not saying to completely go overboard and avoid it wholesale, but this is information that I wanted to present to you. My ideal box from Oil Lab would have been the Forest Retreat and the Algae Mania Facial Oil, which I am very interested in and has a cardamom scent. So I think that that's all I have for you today. I would love to continue the conversation in the comments if people have other perspectives or research to contribute to this. I'm all ears. I love sharing information and I'm really passionate about beauty products. I think that they can add a lot to our lives, but I fully believe in being a comprehensively informed beauty consumer. So this is just where I'm coming from. I will look forward to seeing you guys hopefully next week. I have some other videos planned for the month. I'm gonna be doing an Earthwise Beauty review of the cleansers, mists, and serums. I think I'm gonna do skincare empties, and I think I'm gonna try and do a favorites video at the end of the month, so pretty ambitious. But if you aren't already subscribed, please do subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. You can find me on Instagram, at L'Amour et La Musique. And I also do a ton of work. In fact, most of my time over the last year um, has really been focused on my Patreon community, patreon.com slash La Musique. I do a lot of exclusive content over there, full videos, podcast episodes. I go live every week and do a get ready with me. And I do a live Q&A every month as well. So there's four different tiers of support. Again, feel free to ask questions about that. And that's all I've got. I'll talk to you guys hopefully next week.